Hi, Eric of Online Software and welcome back to our courseware. Before we continue finalizing the shot we started in the last three sessions, let me give you a fast introduction to vectors. For that, just let's create a simple text bus and write something useful like, for example, Fusion Rocks. Bring the size up and also add a background tool and that should have a medium gray value of uh, 0.5. Now to the text tool we add a displace, connect the background to the display foreground input and set it to XY mode which means the red and green channels of my background actually drive the displacement of my displace tool. And you see I do have an instant displacement in X and Y based on the fact that I have a medium gray background here. So as we did last time, I just add a brightness contrast behind my background and set the brightness to minus 0.5. So the medium gray value of the background comes out as black and if we have a look at our uh, waveform here, you see a nice line, straight line, on the zero level here. So what happens now if I increase the red value on my background tool? Well, you see that the displacement actually moves the text to the right, which is to no surprise, because red in my displace tool is driving the X displacement. So the higher the red value, you would expect the higher the offset. But this maxes out at somewhere around a value of 1.5. And this is because the background is still set to 8-bit. So again, remember, if you want to use tools like that and you want to use them sophisticated, switch it to 32-bit floating point. So what happens now if I bring my red values towards a negative value, like, say, minus 5? You would expect that the displacement takes place in the opposite direction, but again nothing happens. And this is because of another fact that is very vital to remember when working in Fusion. The background input of a tool always wins. The background input of a tool always determines how the tool is processed, and especially in this case, in which color depth the tool is processed. Our text tool, again, is still set to 8-bit. So if we switch that to 32-bit floating point, also the displace will be processed in 32-bit float, which means now when I change the value of my red channel to be negative, the text is displaced towards the left. Same for the green channel. If I modify the green channel, then the displacement goes down for negative values and up for positive values, all working in 32-bit floating point. Let's bring this back to 0.5 and imagine that I want to move certain parts of the image individually using my displacement tool and actually I want to divide the image into 10 by 10 little boxes. So what I do is I take my background, go to the image tab and set it to 10 by 10 pixels. Control F zoom in, switch off the checkered background and switch off smooth resize as well. So now let's add a filter tool and actually I want this to be a noise filter. I want it to operate on the red channel only and I want to ramp the power up and it should not be animated so it's just a static noise. Applying that to my displace tool now moves the text in X based on those little blocks. Actually, to make this a little bit better, I could resize my image back to the original size of 1280 by 720 and using the nearest neighbor method I get basically the same pixel blocks I have here for my full image. If I now increase the contrast on my brightness contrast here, Actually, let's increase it a lot. 
you see that my text is displaced based on these little blocks individually in the x-axis. If I want to happen the same thing in y as well, I just copy and paste my filter tool and say this should work only on the green channel and I will give it a different random seed. So again, you can see if I modify my contrast, the little blocks of my image are displaced individually. So that's a fast introduction into vectors using the red and the green channel to modify the displacement using a displace tool. So what does it mean for our original shot? In the last tutorial we created this setup here and if we look at our original window pane once more which now has this nice displacement going on uh, one thing that counts for those old style windows is that the individual panes normally are not perfectly aligned but they're a little askew, a little bit differently askew on each and every individual pane. So we apply the same trick I just showed you with the text plus to our setup here. We use a background tool and we have a 4x4 four four pattern so the image should be 4x4 four four pixels wide 32-bit floating point, give it a 0.5 gray value here, add our filter for the red channel, should switch that off maybe, noise, bring the power up, maybe randomize it a little bit, copy and paste the filter make it work on green, give it a different seed, oh, and of course switch off animate. Then brightness contrast with a value of minus 0.5 to normalize it down to the values we need and resize to 1024 by 1024 which was our original resolution for the map using the nearest neighbor method. So now we need to apply this to the original bump map in our reflect tool. However, the bump map tool we have here is a 3D texture tool. So we need to replace this with a create bump map tool as we did down here. A nice thing about Fusion is if you right click on any tool and select replace, in this case filter, create bump map, the newly inserted tool will take over the values of the old tool that are the same in the new tool. So then I still need my original bump map tool back. But in this case the incoming image is not a height map but a bump map because we already have our create bump map tool here and this guy goes back into the reflect shader. So our window for now looks exactly the same as it did before. So now we need to combine this newly created bump map down here with our original bump map. And that's easily done with a merge tool. So we insert a merge and put this guy on top. And actually, let me actually switch this to a uh, normalized view here for the merge. The merge itself, in this case, should work in overlay mode and we could bring down the gain a little bit actually bring it down a lot like that and if you now observe our reflections here on the left side on our actual window if I go to my brightness contrast and bring the contrast up you can see that the reflections are actually shifted in different directions based on our bump map based on our vector map actually we create down here so something like that would do. And then of course we also have our bump map for the original window we use further down to displace our background plate. So apparently this one needs a merge tool as well. And we feed it with the resize and set it to overlay as well. 
And in this case, let's bring down the gain to something like this. Right. If we now watch our uh, displace here, which is displacing the original background here, I could go into my merge and adjust the gain of my overlay mode to change the uh, amount of displacement. But that of course means that I have to re-render all these tools. So to save render time, it's much easier to modify the brightness contrast that is behind my renderer here and again modify the contrast and you see that now my original background plate based on the contrast moves my image into slightly different directions here so if we now combine all this you see we have a very believable well apart from the quick model we built we have a very believable reflection and displacement on the background going on we have our highlights here our reflections on the window panes that actually shift position a little bit when they come into a different window pane which after all makes the shot much more believable enjoy playing with this composition and stay tuned for more tutorials See you next time. Cheers.